Okay. You're all set. Can we go now? Yep. It looks like until Jackie's going. Okay. You're all set, Granddaddy. Okay, sorry. When Migo and I first got married, we lived in a rental house, and we didn't have a uh, heater nor a stove. So uh, right beside where I was working was a furniture store, a man named Davis owned it. And we bought, and of course I didn't have much money, we bought what we needed, and they collected once a week, two or three dollars. That's about all we could do. So, so they, and I paid them every time they come around, but the last payment, the man's son, Mr. Davis's son, who was a preacher, and I didn't know, but uh, but but he's he come and got the last payment. And I paid him. He said, "Well, you all paid up." He said, "Let me say you something else." And I said, "Oh no, man, we paid on this long enough. No, nothing <laughs> else." He said, "But this is free." And I said, "What do you got that's free?" And before I knew it, he then took out his Bible and he said, and he was sitting in one chair, me another, and he and he said, "This is free. Salvation is free." So he said, uh, he, he, he took the Bible and he showed me where all sin and Jesus died for our sins and if I wanted to accept him, I could be saved and, and go to heaven. And I said, well, I sure would like that. And especially it's free. And so uh, we, he went ahead and showed me the scripture and everything. And he said, now if you'll just get on your chair, get on your knees, and bow your head on your chair, and you just pray what I tell you to pray. And if you mean it in your heart, I said, you'll be saved. So he led me through the plan of salvation. And I did. I wanted to be saved. I, 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 from the time I was a little guy, I sure didn't want to go to hell. So I wanted to be saved. And he showed me how. And I accepted the Lord right there. And then the next Sunday, I went to his church because I didn't know any of the church. And I talked to the preacher. And he said he would baptize me if, uh, if I was truly saved, and I told him I was. And so he baptized me, and then we joined the church. And so I had the assurance then that I had accepted Jesus, and I was going on to heaven. So all I want to say is, is when I get to heaven, and I'm going, and you can go too, uh, I want to see every one of you there, because I would be heartbroken if some of my people didn't accept the Lord and go to heaven. So I want you to think about it as you as you get older and 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 ask Jesus to save you and get into a good church and just live the best you can for the Lord. And that's the way I got saved. So that's just how it was. And ever since then I've been sure glad that I didn't have to die and go to hell. I was real glad that I had a place to go. So when I die, you folks will be here when I die. And when you come to my funeral, you say, that's not granddaddy laying in that casket. Because granddaddy's done going up to heaven. <laughs> but that's my body that they're going to bury. And one day when Jesus comes, he'll bring up our bodies. And we'll go and be, live with him. And boy, I'd like for every one of my children to be there. Because I love every one of them. I love <laughs> you all. And I want to be with you forever. And so that's, that's my testimony. That was good. So, Thank you, sir. Awesome. So you just you just do that if you know and remember it's a good thing it's a good thing and it really costs you nothing all you got to do is just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Savior and that's it and that's my testimony. Well, thank you, Granddaddy. And I, and I saw when when Grace got baptized, I saw that on the video, and I thought that was so sweet that her folks were able to. To get in the baptismal pool. That, oh, yeah. that's, well, that's right. Matt thing. climbed in. That's, that's right. Yeah, that's sort of a that's sort of a new thing because when I, I was baptized, home. just just one, you mm -hmm. just you know. not in our church. Not in our church. I'm nursing that. Oh, and I, oh, I believe in the family. Back in the back in the day, day, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I've never so, seen that in church before. There's a lot of people here who get baptized in the lake. So, so, so I thank you kids for being still and quiet and listening. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want to know about Granddad? Huh? How old were you when you got married, Granddad? I was 18 and I think Nico was 16. So you weren't old enough to know better. And, uh, well, she began to raise me. Pretty good. <laughs> you raised you pretty good. You were still a baby. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is not testimony now, but when I went down to get her dad, and see, they had to sign. I was 18, and I didn't have to have my parents to sign for the marriage license. So I went down. You talk about a guy shaking his boots. Her dad was a body and fender man, and he was laying on a 
on the creeper working on the underside of a car. And I went down there and I, I you know, I swallowed hard and all this and I, his name was Mac Dougal. And I hmm. said, Mr. Mac, you ready to go down and sign them licenses? <laughs> he said, I reckon so. <laughs> I felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> you got lucky. And then we got married in that church by Dr. Avery, and then we went to, we didn't have any money for honeymoon, so we had rented a little house, $30 a month. I still remember that. And uh, it was just a little cement building, just square. And uh, that was our honeymoon. We went out there and cleaned up the house, and we didn't have any furniture much. I <coughs> some of our folks give us a bed and what we had to cook on before I bought the stove. I was saying about we had a two burner hot plate. That's all. I lived on soup and love for about, <laughs> about the first two years. <laughs> soup and love. I tell you, huh? Yes, I tell you, if I had to do it again, I would have probably went a year earlier. Earlier? Wow. Yeah. Got married at 17? I, I was eight, 18, she was 16. But you would have gotten married at 17 and not 18? Well, why not? I didn't have nothing else to do. <laughs> I'm glad they have cable. <laughs> what, what was your job, Granddad, when you married Grandma? Well, I had, while I was dating her, I worked at a service station that a guy named Murray and a guy named Kowser owned together. And then Mr. Murray went out and bought him a new station. And he hired me and gave me $35 a week. And uh, I worked there until I just couldn't hardly make it on $35 a week. You, you, Mig O was in high school. We had that expense. And she was working at Polly's Ice Cream Bar making a little bit of money. <laughs> Polly's Ice and, Cream. <laughs> and uh, it was a good place to go in court. We could, could get a milkshake. No, she didn't give me no break. <laughs> but, uh, but, but then, after that, I, I, I asked the man for a raise, and he raised me to forty-two fifty, and that was no okay. And, uh, and so I went to work. Somebody said one of the guys at Coca-Cola Bottling Great. Company was quick. I'm okay. And I knew the man mm -hmm. that owned it because I was president of the student body at high school and I was on the athletic committee and the president of the Coca-Cola Bottling Company furnished all the signs and everything. He was on that committee and I knew it. So, uh, but he was out of town, but he had left word to hire me. And uh, so when I come back, first they put me inside putting bottles in the soaker, they call it, where yes, they clean sir. those bottles. And that paid 45 a week. That was two dollar and a half raise. But when, when I, when he come back, he said I didn't hire him for that. I hired him to put him on a route truck. Ooh. And that paid fifty a week. And they furnished your uniforms and cleaned them. Hmm. So, so that's what I did until, uh, until I went to work with Burden. So and they paid a little better. <laughs> so that's what I just always did. We just got by. How long did you do the bottling thing? Hmm? How long were you doing the bottling, the bottle route? Oh. I did that for about five years. Oh, Is that what messed up your back? And then that's where I messed up my that's back. The, yeah. You, Those you things take, are heavy. Take 24 bottles or 12 ounces Glass of bottles bottle. plus yeah. the oh. bottle and the, and the case it was in. Wooden case. Wooden case. Wooden case. And uh, you take That'd one That'd be 60 pounds. Hand. They weighed about as much as I did. Oh. They'd take one in each hand. And... Uh, and then I had the beach route, which was in the summer was high volume. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I sold a truckload to one place. He wanted 250 cases for Fourth of July, and the truck held 252. So my truck was already about half empty. And I called for another truck, Call took two up. cases <laughs> off of that one, and left them to unload that truck. And went hmm. on the route. <laughs> I left them <laughs> unloaded. <laughs> so, so I worked hard. We started when I went to work with Bertie's son. We hmm. We started at, we met at 5.30. I went to work at 5.30 in the morning, and they, everybody would sit around the table like this, all the right men. And, uh, and, and they had a cold Dr. Pepper waiting at 5.30 in the morning. Pretty soon you got used to that. <laughs> <laughs> you liked it. Getting that caffeine. And, and then we had a 30-minute pep talk, and then you hit the trucks at 6 o'clock. Sometimes it would be nine before you got through. Sometimes in the wintertime you might get through at four, five, but most of the time I was working six days a week and 
hard, hard yeah. labor. But they were good people. Mm -hmm. they, they, they helped you every way they could. And how old were you when you had mom? Well, let's see. That was 14 months after we got married. So I was, I lacked from, I lacked from October the 12th to November the 1st, being 20. Wow. I was 19 when she came along. I was so in love with that little girl. <laughs> I just threw on my shoulders and walked down the sixth street. Back in those days, you'd be two, two years away from marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. and it was it was a lot of fun. I was young. As long as I could pay my bills, I didn't worry about money. Didn't worry about nothing. If we could get diapers and bottles for <laughs> for grandma. But, for the grandma. You're yeah. talking about your baby and calling yeah, her grandma. <laughs> oh, uh, five years later, we had Robert. <laughs> now, did you guys plan to have Uncle Rob? That's a long span in between. Hmm? That's a long, a long yeah. wait. Well, we had not planned that, but it just worked yeah. out that way. Why is that second one always unplanned? Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Our second one wasn't. Y'all's wasn't? <laughs> Mother says, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> Maybe she did. I did. Mine was. Where are the kids? Robert, Kevin, right there. Right there. What else do we want to know about Granddad? Oh, what? I got eight minutes left. Eight minutes left. Yeah, if you got any questions, I'll answer them. I'll make a long story Tell short. Tell us about what you changed. What was that, Charles? About your mom. My mom, my mom will be a hundred years old the fifth of next month. Wow. And uh, my dad lived to be eighty-eight years old. And when I go into places that I, they ask questions, you know, doctors' offices and everything, they say, how old was your dad when he died? I say, 88. They say, how old was your mother when she died? They say, she's still living. She's still going. <laughs> yeah. and so that, how old was she when she had you? She must have been, because you're 80. 17. She was 17, okay. 17. She, she was 17. She married, and how old was Papa Kendrick then? 49. Wow. Didn't work out that good either. <laughs> That was at one of the throat all I can remember. Well, so they got married when your mom was how old? I think she was 16. 16 and Maybe. he was 48. Yeah. Wow. wow. 32 years difference. And wasn't she, and then you already had Wait, what? I missed that. I was watching the video. Who? You already had siblings from Papa Kendrick. Who was that? He already had. He already daddy had. Daddy. About nine young. Yeah. So Mary Jane wow, and that only happened these days. Yeah, to, to kids nine, that were older than her. To kids that were older than her. That constituted a problem right off. I don't blame Mama. Daddy was grown. He ought to have better sense, but he didn't. Wow. So I'm glad I'm here. Me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, you guys are a part of that also. Wow. No, there's a. I got a sister that's 15. No, oh. named Wanda that's 15 years younger than I am. So. But I, she's Papa Kendrick and your mom's. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Because mom was still young, and right. so she had. To, in fact, after they divorced, well, she married another guy and they had twins. Wow. And one of them uh, had diabetes, and he didn't take care of himself and he stuck a nail in his foot and didn't get it took care of. They had to take off the foot and then take off the leg and somehow they had to take off the other foot and he died right recently. Wow. Just because he had no care. I told mom, I said, if I'd have been there, they live up in Alabama. I said, I, I would they didn't have him on any low carbohydrate diet. They didn't have him on any insulin. Mm -hmm. They didn't have Nothing. him doing the things you got to do. Mm. And that's so the reason I'm so careful. Where were you born then, Granddad? Hmm? Where were you born? I was born in a little place eight miles north of Elba. And it was, uh, it was a little, to Elba was about not quite as big as London. And, and then there was a place up here was called Victoria. It had two stores and, a, and service there, a gut station and a sandwich station and a post office. And two doctors lived there. I guess they... It was a good place to live, when not they? And so, uh, well, they just about they had to have a farm. Called. People paid them with what they had. Right. Daddy was told me one time what it cost him. I think he gave them, I think he gave Doctor a hog and a half a dozen chickens and some syrup. And, wow. and you know, the doctor took what he could get. And, and they lived better than anybody else. <laughs> they still the do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what. For what it cost 
and time and money and effort. They deserve it. I tell you more, I'm around doctors and sorry to say I'm around them a lot. <laughs> but, but, you know, some of those guys go to school an awfully long time. And some of them, uh, the folks had to finance them. Some of them had to borrow a lot of money. And I know they got to charge. Well, Daddy, how about your your brothers, your other brothers? The, the ones I, that I not... got a brother, the oldest boy of Daddy's was named D. lived in Birmingham. He was in the service in World War II. Uh, he died with a heart attack. I think he was in his late 50s. And the other brother was named Ed. He was not in the service. He was doing some kind of job that they exempted him. And uh, actually, I think he was undertaken. So uh, he died from a heart attack when he was in his early 50s. Then I had another brother named Don, and he died at 65 with a heart attack. And then I had a brother named Frank, who died in his 30s. He was in World War II, and so was Don. And he died with a massive heart attack. And uh, I think he I know had so I'm many going. heart attacks, he couldn't. He I think couldn't. it's in the cards. <laughs> yeah. So, and then I had a brother named Roy, who, a uh, brother named Tully, that died with a heart attack. I don't know how old Tully was, but he wasn't all that old. Ed had a son, which was my nephew. He died at 39 with a massive heart attack. And he, he was a well-educated boy and he worked for a corporation. And they went to a meeting and he was in a motel room and they were supposed to meet for breakfast and he didn't show up. And they got and he, they went to his room to get him and he, the door was locked and they had to get the motel folks to come and, and cut the door. Clearly the bad heart was on Papa Kendrick's first wife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that, that Wanda's Wanda's still related to us? Yeah, yeah. Wanda's Funny thing, though, I never affected the girls. Yeah. The boys was the one that had the, had the heart problems. Wow. Roy didn't die from a heart attack. He'd had one or two, but sometime during the, during the surgery that he was in the hospital, they gave him some blood that was contaminated with uh, hepatitis C. Oh. And he died a slow, agonizing death. Oh. And uh, and he was saved. Don was saved. Uh, I think maybe D was. I don't know about it. I wasn't that close. Uh, but Don was a deacon in his church, Baptist church. He thought he could sing. He used to, <laughs> he used to embarrass me. He came to my church. He could sing loud. <laughs> But I'm not sure he was on the key. <laughs> we should, we'd stand there and Don would sing out. But Don loved me and I loved Don. In fact, in, in fact... Uh, was that was that why known as Daddy? Yeah, why oh. known as Daddy. He was on the board of deacons, that little church up there. And so uh, once, once or twice he asked me to come over and when they would get a new deacon, come over and be on the ordination committee. And... Uh, we got along fine. I got along fine with all of them. And then yeah. there was two girls. Yeah. Two girls was named. And then Daddy had two that died, a boy and a girl, But when they were little. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Sis was uh, was Tommy's mama, and Ed and Mary Charles. I always call Mary Sis. And uh, then, uh, then there was Lou Ellen, mm -hmm. who spent... 20 something years in Ethiopia. Her husband flew for Ethiopian Airlines and they stayed over there. I said, Blue Ellen has got to be lazy. She never done anything in her life. Over there they could hire somebody. I think she said $13 a month was all, and they were glad to get the job. So she had a cook, a housekeeper, and a man outside that did the driving and keeping up the yard and all that. I'm moving to Ethiopia. But they had to, but Man. they had to. They had to sacrifice when her children got to the ninth grade. There was no education. So they sent them back to the States in a boarding, boarding school. And, and they was out. But Paul stayed over there because he wasn't reached high school age before they come home. Llewellyn said when they started hearing machine gun fire, or when they woke up in the morning, they decided it's time to retire, come home. And, uh, She's still and Paul can speak perfect. I'm here. Wow. I'd like for him. I'd like for him. I would and love Eddie. to see that. Yeah. yeah. Cause he, I don't know he was Eddie raised up over him. there. And, you know, his best friend was one of the Ethiopians. And 
they he just spoke, you know, their language. Why don't does Daddy talk to anybody ever? I'm missing a gato. Just to keep it fresh. Why don't you just get some Ethiopian kid videos and watch them? Well, the reason being is um, I didn't grow up speaking Amharic. Oh. That was her second language. What's your first language? Sidamel. Sidamel. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, it was, My it was sister said dialect. over there, Ooh, she, said everybody Ooh, had a different dialect. You could be in the dialect. same country and not speak the same language. Both and she's still alive. How old is she? Yes, she's uh, 11 years older than me. She was my babysitter. Wow. She, she's uh, 93. In her book, you got that she wrote the book. And she was my babysitter. And of uh, course, Mama had to work and Daddy had to work on his farmers. Everybody worked. And uh, so she stayed home with the baby. And she said, she said she was pinning a diaper on me when I was just a baby and stuck that pin in me. And she said, I cried for a week. Oh. <laughs> I told Dennis, I'm going to write her. She lives in Bonifay now. I said, I'm going to write her. And uh, so that would make her 94, I think. 94, yeah. Because uh, she'll be 94. I'm going to write sure. her until I forgive her. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Don't worry about it anymore. Don't worry about it. Time, enough time's passed. Oh, that's cute. Well, Daddy, that was interesting. I'm glad we've got it on. Well, yeah, well, that, that was my family. They grew up poor, but we had a lot of Kendricks in Elba, and Daddy was the, old, was the next to the oldest boy, but he took up being the father when his dad died. My granddad died in his 40s with a heart attack. Heart attack, yeah. And uh, so Wait, when... Granddad on your mom's side? I know how I'm going. Daddy's side. If it's you keep all working like you do, but if you so it's in the car. Is, now, my mom comes no from the tribe from the people he's had who six heart attacks. Are Indian. He's lived because he's how, taking care of himself. How much Indian would you take care of How much Indian is your mom? She's Cherokee. What are you doing? Uh, She's you Cherokee know. or Blackfoot. I told Sandy, what? I talked to her, and she said, oh. we don't oh, really know. Said My dad said that some Blackfoot Indians out west, when the white men started coming, they drifted down to where the Cherokees were and lived with the Cherokees. She said, they might be claiming to be Cherokees or they might be Blackfoot. I don't know. But Mama, I think Mama was... Either a quarter, or I believe she was a quarter. Would make me an eighth. Y'all a sixteenth. And you're a thirty-two. So far that the government won't give you any money. They so. will for up to sixteenth, I think. What? I think they will up to sixteenth. After that, I don't think you get any. Well, I don't know. Try it and see. <laughs> if you get, you get it. I'll try. It. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but, but we were just pay you farm people. My, my <laughs> uncle Terry was the county property appraiser, I think, and my uncle Will was the county tax collector. And since mom and daddy both worked after we moved to Elba, daddy worked with a lumber company. He was a lumber checker. Mama worked with a sewing factory in Andalusia. She would take the bus every day and go to work. Andalusia was about probably 25, 30 miles from there. And, uh, when I got out of school, I would go down to the courthouse and go to Uncle Will's office or Uncle Terry's, and they'd give me a typewriter and some paper, and I, was, <laughs> I would sit there till time went by, you know. Or go to the theater. It cost nine cents to get in. So, so uh, <laughs> and I had a thing going. There was a place down there called W.W. W. Clark's Filling Station, and they had four or five big pecan trees, but they made them little seedlings. And in World War II, they wanted the pecans for oil to make nitroglycerin. Oh. And so they would buy any amount, I mean a pound. And all. And Mr. Clark said, son, you can have all if you pick them up. And I'd go after school and pick up both pockets full, go down to Tatum's Hardware and sell them, <laughs> come out with about a quarter, and that was going to show and getting some popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> for, 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 for a quarter, for yeah. <laughs> For a so, pocket load of pecans. <laughs> so so I, I had an interest in upbringing. Mighty poor, but happy. Well, that's, we were happy. that's what you I was happy. That's what you needed. And then when did you move to Panama City? When World War II came along and they had a shipyard down point. there, a contractor named W.W. W. Oh. Wainwright. Uh, had a, it was Wainwright Yard. His name was Jones, I'm sorry. And uh, so moved down there, and Mama became a welder. Daddy was too old to work there, so he uh, he worked at a 
a milk place where they ship milk in and after every shift change down there, people just lined up to buy milk. Everything was scarce in World War II. You couldn't get chewing gum, you couldn't get candy, you couldn't get fruit, uh, apple or bananas, anything that had to be shipped. It just, I mean, the German submarines just shipped, it just sunk all the ships. And uh, so uh, that's what they did. Mama was uh, uh, a good welder, and, and at the time she was small, she was really large now, but she welded what they call double bottoms. She had to get on your back and weld overhead, you know, on the ships. And my grandmother was a welder. She was good, and she got to christen a ship, the SS Bogan, and they give her, they give the captain of the ship a chest, you know, the captain's chest, and they gave her one just like hmm. it. And, uh, Who's, she got was, that? Hmm? <laughs> Who's got that? Who's got that? Oh, she got all them <laughs> Hutchinson's. Uncle Dick was a prisoner of war, and, and he was captured on Corregidor right when the war started. He was in the Marines, and uh, when he got out, he was one of the few lucky ones that did, and he brought home a samurai sword. That thing was pretty. And it had jewels in the handle and everything. It was one of those ceremonial mm -hmm. swords that they cut folks' heads off. <laughs> so he brought it home, and I wanted yeah. that thing so bad. But he gave it to one of his brothers, Dan, and I was, I was just a kid. I didn't get nothing. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Daddy. But but now Christmas time, I remember one present they brought me was, was a was a box, that contained 120 uh, heads. <laughs> no, oh. 120 Hershey's Kisses. <laughs> oh, that was great. That was a start. Of my, <laughs> that must have been a start of my diabetes. <laughs> but, uh, and thus the diabetes yeah. started. Well, it was, things was tough in World War II. First place, there was no housing. They built the shipyard, and there was no place for workers. So they come in there and built three government projects. And you had to wait in line to get one of them. And when we moved down there, we had some friends named Kane, and we shared an apartment with them until we got one ourselves. And uh, uh, that was, we, I thought, so good because we had running water, we had a hot water heater, and where I lived, we didn't even, we had to go to the well to get the water. And uh, so I thought it was pretty good, but, uh, but there was, it was, you couldn't get anything. You, kids couldn't have a bike. I mean, they quit making stuff like that. And a BB gun. I got a bike from my first cousin that somebody, she left it in the driveway and somebody had run over it. And, and Daddy carried it to a body and fender man that could make metal. And it was one of them that had them little tiny t tires. Yeah. And they got it straightened out where I could ride it. And my luck, by the time I started riding it, the, Tire blew out and you couldn't buy it anymore. I rode it on the rim for about two years. <laughs> you didn't need a tire, did you, Daddy? No. <laughs>